So recent developments, um, as you all know, there was an extra label drug use prohibition on cephalosporins, and this does relate to the veterinarian's ability to use antimicrobials. Um, I'll also cover VFDs and the VCPR and the recent court ruling on penicillin and tetracyclines. This just happened in the past couple of days, and actually I've still been dealing with the aftermath all morning, so that's really pretty interesting as well. So um, first, this is the extra label drug use algorithm that AVMA has available. And um, right here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have yet to actually be able to update this because it won't be nearly as pretty as it is right now because of the new extra label drug use prohibitions that are um, in effect on cephalosporins. There are a number of different caveats to that prohibition. And um, here they are listed for you. So the prohibition has certain prohibited uses. Basically, what will be prohibited is um, <clears throat> dose levels, frequencies, durations, or routes of administration that are not on the label. So there were a couple of things that were pointed out specifically in the order of prohibition, things like biobullets, um, Innovo injections, and so forth. Um, other prohibited uses are cephalosporins that are not approved for use in that specific species, um, cephalosporins that are approved for use in humans or companion animals, also things like uh, in water uses, and also using cephalosporins for prevention. Currently, there are no cephalosporins that are approved for prevention uses. Um, there are cephalosporins that are approved for treatment and control. And the question has been asked, so, okay, what is... Um, the gray line between prevention and control uses. And um, <clears throat> the only answer that we as AVMA have identified that is in writing is in the draft guidance 209 document by um, FDA. And so in that document, it does have some specification of what would be uh, judicious uses um, of prevention uses of antimicrobials. Still, it's not terribly clear, and we as AVMA have not asked um, FDA for any further clarification for what they will define as prevention uses. Um, we don't think that that is necessarily the best of ideas. We've basically just said that um, for our veterinarians, we think that it would be best that you just keep appropriate treatment records for what you're doing um, in terms of how you treat the animals. And, of course, we continue to support therapeutic uses of antimicrobials, and we are opposed to any broad-based bans of antimicrobials in general. Um, following that, there's also some extra-label uses that continue to be allowed under the cephalosporin prohibition. Cefepirin, which is only approved for intermammary uses at this time, are still allowed to be used extra-labelly. They are available over-the-counter, and so... Um, FDA does find that those drugs are not of a significant risk to human health, so those uses are still allowed extra labelly. Veterinarians will still be able to use or prescribe cephalosporins for a different indication in cattle, swine, chickens, or turkeys, as long as you follow the dose, frequency, duration, and route of administration that's on the label. So in simple terms, what that means is you can use it for a different disease or indication. So this morning somebody said to me, okay, well, what does that really mean? You can... Uh, you can basically use it for a different disease, but if you can't change the dose, that's probably kind of useless. Well, it may very well be for some diseases. Um, it may be, ooh, mood lighting. Cool. <laughs> and again, more mood lighting. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, it, it, may be, um, it may be problematic, and that remains to be seen. So the implementation date for this order of prohibition, I believe, is coming up really soon. Um, I think it was April 6th or 7th. So um, uh, unless we hear otherwise, it is due to be implemented very, very soon. Um, the minor food producing species are exempted from this order of prohibition. And, of course, AVMA's response can be found here. Um, AVMA did not ask that the order be w withdrawn as in the original order. We did ask for um, further clarification on the rationale for how FDA came to the conclusions that they did come to, but um, there was not a specific ask 
for um, a withdrawal of the order of prohibition. It was just simply um, it, we were unclear on the rationale and the scientific justification for how they came to the conclusions that they came to. Um, there's also a link to Avi May's at work blog on the um, specifics of the prohibition for further clarification, and there's also a, a podcast that provides more detail on the order of prohibition. Um, and actually all this information is probably information that Bill Flynn would have provided had he been here this afternoon, so good thing that it's not a duplication of efforts. And um, if you hear anything differently from Bill, trust what Bill has to say because he is the source of information from FDA. Um, this is a slide that I always like to show when I'm talking about VFDs because Originally, the VFD, the Veterinary Feed Directive, would have required something like this, you know, the huge mounds of paperwork. Hopefully, um, this is something that we won't have as we move forward with the VFD process. So the thought is that um, antimicrobials in feed will move towards VFDs. Um, right now, antimicrobials in feed are, are mostly available over the counter. There's only two products that are available by VFD. There's two in swine and there's two in um, aquaculture, basically. And AVMA has a steering committee that has been working very closely with the FDA, along with um, some input from USDA to facilitate this process in moving the VFD forward. So um, as I said, the, this is the vehicle that we expect for greater veterinary oversight of antimicrobials. Um, d the draft guidance for industry number 209 had indicated that there is a need for greater veterinary oversight. Um, that draft guidance had also indicated that um, the production uses of antimicrobials were considered a non-judicious use. Um, AVMA didn't particularly comment on that component of it, but we did agree with the greater need for uh, veterinary oversight, and so we have been working very closely with FDA for this VFD process. Guidance for Industry 213 is yet to be released, but it is to outline how the pharmaceutical companies are to seek approvals for therapeutic claims, meaning the claims for control and prevention uses as opposed to the production uses of antimicrobials. So what we were expecting previously, um, actually probably about a week or so ago, was that there would be a um, draft codified language for the VFDs, as well as the final document for guidance number 209 and um, guidance 213 to be released. We did not see those documents as expected, and I'll get into perhaps why a bit later. But um, again, as I said, we have a steering committee to work with FDA on this issue of the, of the VFDs, and we do expect that that draft codified language was to be released for public comment. And so the thought process behind that is our steering committee will work as um, kind of a clearinghouse to provide input um, from our various councils and committees and stakeholders to um, facilitate the process of what the, what the VFD will look like, um, you know, what we want it to be to streamline the process to make it a little easier without having that mountain of paperwork that you see and how it will work best for veterinarians, producers, and everybody that's involved to, um, to have the most workable VFD as it moves from this over-the-counter process to, um, <clears throat> um, to the VFD. And the VFD is really expected to be kind of a, a prescription-like product. And um, there are obviously going to be some logistical issues with that because, for one, you know, we have feed mills that provide um, antimicrobials in feed, and we also have antimicrobials in feed that can be bought, um, you know, in bag feed. And, and, and that's something that um, still we don't have a really good handle on how that's going to be dealt with, you know, who's going to distribute those products, how they're going to be uh, licensed and controlled and so forth. So that's something that we're still working on. And, of course, um, AVMA has requested that the VFD codified language be prioritized by Secretary Sebelius and um, Commissioner Hamburg. And what we were told is that um, – the uh, Food Safety Modernize Modernization Act had been prioritized over things such as the VFD and Guidance 209 and 213. So um, our Government Relations Division has been working very hard to try to get this uh, process prioritized and expedited. 
So um, how does the VFDs relate to the VCPR? And this has kind of been mass confusion, and I'm going to do my best to try to explain this to everyone here in the room. And if you don't understand or you have any questions as I'm babbling through this, please raise your hand, ask now, say what you need to say, because I really am going to try to get this message as far and wide as I possibly can. So the current VFD language that is um, in, in the CFR um, <clears throat> is also requiring a VCPR that is defined in AMDUCA. And so within that language, what it says is that um, the VCPR uh, can only exist when the vet has recently seen and is personally acquainted with the keeping care of the animals, blah, 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 and timely visits to the premises where the animals are kept. So this is the current VFD language. It requires a VCPR with this VCPR language, and it is also in AMDUCA for extra label drug use. So there's a couple of different pieces here. You've got to remember this is current VFD language that will likely change, a VCPR that is also in flux, and AMDUCA, which refers to extra label drug use. So now we're talking about VFDs that is not extra label use. VFDs is going to be kind of on label. There won't be any extra label use that is allowed whatsoever with that. So try to keep all those pieces in mind as I move forward. Now, there are other kind of VCPRs floating about. There is the AVMA's Model Practice Act. Within that, there is a VCPR. Um, Currently, that's the same VCPR that is in Namduka. There is also um, the VCPR in AVMA's Principle of Veterinary Medical Ethics. Right now, that is also the same VCPR that's everywhere else. Now, each state also has a Model Practice Act. Um, some states have the same VCPR that AVMA has. Some states have some variation of that VCPR. Some states actually don't require a VCPR at all to write a prescription, any prescription drug. And I know that might come as a surprise to people, but there are actual states that do not require that. So in theory, as a licensed veterinarian, you don't have to have any relationship with the patient or the client, you could just dispense a drug so long as you're a licensed veterinarian. That is concerning, but it does occur in some states. Now, with VFDs as it currently stands, you do have to have a VCPR because it's federally regulated and it's written that way in the CFR. Right now, AVMA is looking at its Model Practice Act. There's new draft language that is being considered for the VCPR within the Model Practice Act. This is the new draft language that's currently being considered. A key point here is that <clears throat> the visits by the veterinarian are to an operation where the patient, and patient is further defined as, a, um, as animal or animals and a herd or flock, where it is managed. And so the difference there is it's an operation and not a premise. Premise is defined as a geographic location, um, a specific area, barn, you know, it's a place. Um, an operation can be specified further where you can visit one component of the operation and still have knowledge of the rest of the operation. So for poultry and swine particularly, I think this may be more advantageous of a definition. So those are some things to think about. So what on earth does all this mean? Are there multiple VCPRs? Well, yes, there are already multiple VCPRs in different states. So that's something that we already have. Um, <laughs> if AVMA's VCPR in the Model Practice Act is approved, then the individual states will have to choose whether or not they are going to adopt that Model Practice Act. Some states will say, hey, yeah, this looks great. We're going to try to move this through our state legislation and take this as our practice act. Other states will say, yeah, yeah, we don't like it so much. We're going to keep what we got. Um, it's hard to say what the different states will do. The VCPR, as it's in AMDUCA for extra label drug use, will not change. That is basically written in stone. It's not going to go anywhere. It is what it is, and it will not change. 
Um, the VCPR within the principles of veterinary medical ethics will be considered after they figure out what they're going to do with the Model Practice Act VCPR. Chances are it'll basically look like what is in the Model Practice Act. I can't guarantee it, but generally within AVMA we like things to be consistent. So whatever is accepted in the Practice Act will very likely be what's in our principle of veterinary medical ethics. So what do we want for VFDs? Well, again, the current requirement for the VCPR, um, for VFDs, is that there needs to be this VCPR that refers back to what's in AMDUCA for extra-label drug use. So it says, you got to visit the premises. Um, is that what we want as a profession, as the, um, our stakeholders and producers and so forth? I don't know. But there's been a lot of back and forth with this very recently, and a decision does need to be made in the near future. So yay or nay, folks. Um, what is expected in the draft codified language for, um, for VFDs coming from FDA, from what we've been told, is that it's going to be more prescription-like. So it'll say something like, Federal law restricts this drug to use by or on the order of a licensed veterinarian. So that's kind of what all of the prescription drugs say. Um, <clears throat> if that's what we see for VFDs, then the responsibility then sort of falls to the states as to how their pharmacy boards will um, implement that and how they will enforce that. And then that's kind of how it all ties into, well, what is the AVMA or the Model Practice Act VCPR say, and what does that really mean? And so that's why it is really important that people have a common understanding of, well, what do you want the VCPR to say, and what do you want it to mean? So the focus right now is the antibiotics that are in feed. Um, it's hard to say what the next target is. Uh, um, I mean, I think FDA kind of only has so many resources to dedicate at a time, um, and right now I think the pressures are on antibiotics and feed. Um, I mean, I have heard a little bit of talk about uh, what's in water as well, but of course, you know, it's always uh, mass medication or anything that's in large quantities is, is considered of greater risk, you know, when you talk, when you talk about um, uh, exposure. So, you know, anything that goes to large groups of animals and stuff, and I think that's why the focus is what's in feed. Um, <clears throat> so that's why they're starting with the VFD process, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> Well, for, for us as AVMA, as we're defining the VCPR, it's, um, you know, I think I can back up a couple of slides here where it says um, a timely examination of the patient by the veterinarian or medically appropriate and timely visits by the veterinarian to the operation where the patient is managed. So um, <clears throat> it's, it's either or. And I think the timely examination of the patient by the vet is really focused more towards the small animal or companion animal practice. And then the other component of that is really more for what you're saying, you know, feedlot and so forth for production animal practices. And then um, there are other components to this that, that I didn't cut and paste in here, but there are um, supplemental pieces of information that you could use, you know, diagnostics, knowledge of the, the operation in terms of um, uh, epidemiology of infectious diseases and, and, th and things like that, um, historical background, clinical information, and, and so forth. So um, these are kind of the basis of information that you could start with to initiate a diagnosis and knowledge of, of, the, of the operation. Right. Well, what, what you're going to start seeing is that you're, you will have to have a veterinarian involved in feeding that drug. And actually, um, the latter part of my presentation here will probably address a lot of what you're talking about, so let's just move on, shall we? There is no extra label use of drugs in feed, period. So if you're using it for a purpose that is not according to the label, that is an illegal use, and if you get caught, you're in trouble. That's an illegal use. This is the rest of my talk, penicillins and tetracyclines. So th this picture is up here because this is a, a real wrench in the plans and a wrench in the machinery here. This just came up uh, a couple of days ago, and, and I've been dealing with this all morning, and for the past couple of days it's been a lot of fun. 
Um, <clears throat> so this is a federal court ruling that just came on, it came down, and uh, this actually has been going on for about 30 years. But um, this is a final ruling, is my understanding. And it states that the commissioner of the FDA or the director of CVM has to reissue a notice of the proposed withdrawals of penicillin and tetracyclines for use in feed for growth promotion uses. So what this means is basically these drugs have to be withdrawn. So FDA has to initiate the proceedings to withdraw penicillins and tetracyclines for use for growth promotions in feed um, basically as soon as possible. If the manufacturers request a hearing, then the, that request must be granted, but that's only if they actually request that. So um, the speculation is perhaps FDA's resources have been diverted from issuing the draft codified language for VFDs 209 and 213 to dealing with this process here because um, we have yet to see what their um, plan is for implementing this, um, <clears throat> this ruling as they've been instructed to do that just came forward.